Alrighty, folks, welcome back. We're going to start a new lesson today. And, and, I, and listen, if you're watching today, we'd like to hear from you. We really would. Facebook, uh, live stream, uh, you can call 304 591 6993. We'd love to hear from you. We're just family here, so come on in and join us. Don't be ashamed to get on that air and talk to us. After we're done uh, teaching today, we're going to spend about five minutes waiting for you to call in if you like to. But if you like to call while we're teaching, I wish you would. We need your input. And we were discussing during the break there a lot of different things and uh, sharing some information. I was talking to, to Lynn here, Lynn Hudock, who's a math teacher uh, at, sc at her school, and she's st <laughs> sharing stories I'm laughing about, but it really aren't funny. Uh, how the children had no idea what a coupon was, how to use a coupon, and she showed them the name of a politician with a D after his name, and she said, you know what that means? They said, dumb. And I said, well, that's probably that's right. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but they, they, they don't know what the DNR stands for after the names of the politicians. And they, they told her, when she's trying to teach them how coupons work and, and how you handle real money by using play money, they said, this is dumb. We don't need that. We got a card. Yep. Now, folks, think about that, what I just said. Won't it be easier, Phil, who'd like just to use your palm or your face to pay? And so human frailty wanting to do things the easy way. Yeah. I mean, why do you need an old dumb car? Just look at, just look at the camera. Is that not true? It's really true. And it's really sad. And when I hear these things, it, it really bothers me. And I was talking to Lynn during the break also that please don't think just because I'm a pastor and a preacher and a talk show host, whatever, that I'm any more than just a mere mortal. I'm just a man. That's all that I am. And I, I too get frustrated and aggravated, and, and the scripture keeps coming back to my mind that I know is true because it's in, it's in the Bible and I want to live it, is be ye not weary in well-doing, for ye shall reap if ye faint not. Now, folks, let's, before we get into this lesson, well, this lesson just is going to show you how we got where we are and, and the nature of man to, to get us where we are. But we have to understand that Unless there's a divine intervention, and I don't see it happening, because mm -hmm. I don't see any repentance hardly anywhere, no. that this thing will get worse. Mm -hmm. And those that love Christ, and those that will not uh, compromise His com His commandments and and His Word, are going to face persecution like you've never seen before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I tell you, be ye not weary in well doing. Do what you have to do that's right. And understand that you, if you're immortal like everybody else is, you're going to have days, and I'm saying this respectfully, don't take it the wrong way, you like to say to hell with it all. Really. I mean, I, I get tired. Dick, do you get tired? Mm -hmm. And you, you, you tell people things, and you preach it and teach it, or just go out and share it with the family, and it's like spitting against a brick wall. You wonder, this is, Lord, this is doing no good. Why can't I just quit? Be ye not weary in well doing. He don't, it, Stevie doesn't tell me why this happens as, as far as when I say, why can't I quit? He doesn't say, well, now this is why, little fella. He says, be ye not weary in well doing. That's his word. He doesn't break down to me in a letter every day, Kelly, and tell me this, 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 this. He says, this is my word. Be ye not weary in well doing. You're going to reap. Now, either I believe that or I don't. Right? And, and, and Paul said uh, in Romans chapter 8 that all the things he was going through will be counted as nothing to the glory he'll share with Christ one day. Mm -hmm. Is that not true? Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and in Hebrews chapter 12 he says uh, to lay aside all the sins that easily beset us and run with patience the race set before us. Now I don't sometimes like that race. I don't. I enjoy my life as with family and friends, but when I look around, and this is where we get all bogged down. If we look at the circumstances and the evil around us continually and don't keep our eye on Christ, it will tear you apart. Peter walked through the water till he looked at the waves. True? Mm -hmm. and then he got scared. Then he got scared. <laughs> if I look at what's happening and I see it happening, of course it bothered me. But my eyes on Christ, the author, and finish in my faith. Live one for that, I would quit. I would. I think about my grandchildren, my old daughter, my granddaughter, be 
days a second, right? Two days should be 18 years old. Wow. wow. And, and I think about my youngest grandson is, I think, eight or ten, eight or nine. And I think what they're facing, in the near, it's already here in the near future, Dick. I, it breaks my heart for them. Do you realize that my granddaughter has never, was, not, was never reared in a time when being a homosexual was not considered normal? Really? Right. 18 years. Think about that. that now think about you. When you were 18, what was homosexuality thought about then? What did you know it existed? Didn't you know what it was? It no. Was. In less than a generation, it's went that far down the wrong road. So if I look at that and just dwell on that, it would drive me insane. But I remember Christ said, Be ye not weary and well doing. Because yeah. you will reap if you faint not. He said, Endure to the end. The same should be saved. You not say that? Yes. So if I can, if I believe His word, then I have to get my eyes off the situation and look upon Him, who said, "Follow me. I'll take care of these things. You follow me." But between here and the end, I may face a lot of things I never thought I'd ever face. I, I know I'm getting off track the lesson, but I don't. I, I hope you don't mind. I went up to visit a friend in prison the other day. He's in prison now, really, through no fault of his own, but because he couldn't afford to pay weekly on that monitoring break, so he's in prison. And I, he said, when you come in here, they charge you a $30 processing fee to come in. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, and if you do a blood test, what you do, it's, it's mandatory. They charge you so much for that for blood test. And if you need toiletries, they charge you so much for that. So it's a money-making racket all the way around. Mm -hmm. and, I, and he's sitting in the glass, and Marsha and I are here talking to him. Now, Charlie, you, you all may have seen him. He knows what about. Anyway, I said, Charlie, when I, when, one day when I'm behind those glass, will you come visit me? And Marsha said, don't say that. I said, that, that, I laughed and she laughed. And we, she said, yeah, I will. He said, yes, I will. But, you know, I, I was partially joking. Right. But not completely. Mm -hmm. When it becomes a crime to stand against sin, then I'll be in prison mm -hmm. or dead. Mm -hmm. One or the other. And it's coming. I promise you, it's coming. Whenever we see the the, the, the perversion all around us, and not just in the, in the sexual area, but all around us. And when you and I be, become more righteously outraged over this and speak up about it, you will eventually pay for speaking up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> in, in Isaiah chapter 20, he says that the righteous make themselves pray, P-R-E-Y, to the wicked. Mm -hmm. Now, how would that work, Bill? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's there's a saying, uh, if there's nothing you would, wouldn't die for, then there's nothing you to live for. Amen. And, and in Hebrews chapter 3, it tells you that he took away that fear of death so we can learn how to live. That's right. You know, here's a verse in Acts chapter 4. It says, Peter said, or Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God, to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have heard. Amen. And that's chapter 5, it says, It's better we, we obey God than men. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read to you a couple verses that Joe just showed me ago that I should have got them home. But I'm going to start a lesson entitled, entitled Man the Usurper. What's a usurper? Slave? Someone who takes no. someone who usurps our authority and our rights by um, putting laws above us that are contrary to the word of God. Anyone who w wants to take away righteous authority and control. take away that usurp that authority. Is that what this feel? Yeah. Right, right. To control. Right. So every time we I'm talking about us right now. Disobey a commandment of God. Are we usurping authority? Yes. Yeah. And we're also stealing. That is not true. Mm -hmm. And that's true, right? So man's nature is to be a what then? Usurper. Usurper. <laughs> yeah. So before we throw stones at government, remember that man's nature is that. And as long as we allow man to have his way, mm -hmm. including ourselves, we are denying God, His laws, His kingdom, 
and that's very dangerous. That, yes, Phil. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you think about it, man has created a fictional usurper of God called Santa Claus. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. He knows sure. all. He, you know, can do amazing things. Uh, he keeps a book of who's good. Naughty and nice, yeah. So he's a usurper. He's a fictitious usurper of, of God himself. Yeah. I bet he got sugar too from all the cookies and apples and stuff he eats. <laughs> but I'm going to read to you very quick. This is, uh, again, Joe found me in going to read a couple verses to you. And while I'm doing that, these verses in the book of Luke, chapter 22. Feel, look, uh, feel your Bible in your lap. Yep. Look up Matthew, chapter 6, if you don't mind. And Kelly, Jeremiah, chapter 17. And Steve, Isaiah 12. Look at those three verses while I read this verse. I'm going to show you that in the kingdom of, of the, the righteous kingdom of our God, of, of our Savior, Jesus Christ, what righteous authority really is and how it should be run. If, if we had a righteous government, and I'm using that as a term of right now, civil government, we would have servants who serve us, not rule us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand that? But what they have done over a process of time is usurp the authority from the people and taken it away and become our, our rulers, right? right. Mm -hmm. But Christ said in Luke chapter 22, verse 25, And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. Now notice he said Gentile. Gentiles referring to heathens, unbelievers. Heathen, unbelievers. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. Think about that. But ye shall not be so, but he that is grace among you, let him be as a younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. So the greater the office in the kingdom of God, the more the servant that person is. You follow what I'm saying? He's there to serve the people, and the higher the office, the greater servant he is. You follow what I'm saying? And, and in, a, in a righteous way of living, and if we had righteous leadership today, the president is to be servant to all the people, not his, not their master. Right. Right. A pastor of a church is a servant to the people, not the master. Although he's given authority to lead, a, a, a leader has to have authority or he has nothing to, to, with, with, with which to enforce the rules. But uh, he's given authority as a pastor because he's servant to the people. So we have today, in man's nature, being magnified a million times over, usurping the God's laws, not only in the heathen world, in the Gentile world, but in what we call the Christian world. The church is now usurped by the authority and want to change his word, don't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. they, they, they want to do away with his laws against sin. What's sin? What is sin? What the Bible, what's, what's the Bible saying in 1 John 3 is sin? Yeah. But if but 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 Steve, you can't say somebody seeing that man hurt their feelings. So be it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, folks. We're, we're seeing this reputation of God's laws. When you see that, when you see us trying to circumvent the laws of, of our Creator that holds all things together, what happens when that's destroyed? Chaos. Chaos. Mm -hmm. I've said this before that Christ said to Christ. Christ created all things, and through him all things consist. The word consist is, when you say something has a consistency, what's that mean? An existence. An existence. And whenever he's, whenever he's no longer there, what happens to that? There's nothing left. Nothing left. Any comments so far? I used to have a bumper sticker on my car that said, God's law or chaos. Mm -hmm. I used to have, I, I picked that up and followed some guy in the gas station and asked him where to get the bumper sticker from. I like that one. That's good. I like that. Yeah. But you know, it's it, it, all types. I mean, it's just man's nature, to, uh, of course, to want to, to usurp and be authority. Unfortunately, man's, most men who receive that power <coughs> use it wrongly. <coughs> It goes to their head, become dictators. But I want to say this move on is what we're going to talk about. All, and I'm talking right now about civil authorities, all civil governments can work if man is right with their creator. I don't care what it is, republic, 
a monarchy. I, I say all, oh, so I mean communism is not the point. I'm talking about, I'm talking about civil authority. Monarchies can work if you have a god of kings. Okay? Uh, a republic can, and, you know, the, the democracy could too if everybody were, were godly people. Right? Yes. But we're not. And when you put the power in the hand of the people outside the laws of God, you have what you have in America today. Yeah, Phil. Yeah, if you think about it, uh, we wouldn't need unions if all the employees were Christians because if something happened, they already got their union. They're unionized with God and right. But what did the unions do? They usurped the power of their people. And a lot of times the unions actually worked hand in hand with the company. So again, everything got all messed up. Sure. Yeah. But buying for power back and forth. Yeah, it should be. Should be. God is the orchestra conductor and everybody looks to him. Yep. And then it would work. I don't care what you have. That's right. If uh, a company is good to the people, the people are going to be good to the company. That's right. The right. e eventually, inevitably, in every system of civil government over all the years of creation, they crumbled because of us usurpation of power. Mm -hmm. No matter how many documents somebody mm -hmm. writes to say this is going to be the outline, we used to say the Constitution, for example, this is the power limited to this outfit, this is this over here. Eventually, always, when God's taken out, those documents are nothing but dead letters. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, without the laws of God and the creation of God's, uh, uh, and the created creation of His mind running all parts of life, no document can hold together to, to preserve a union at all. It's impossible. Now, I'm going to show you in a few minutes about some men who oppose the Constitution, and rightfully so. Patrick Henry said, I see in it the siege of despotism. He would not attend the convention. He would not have anything to do with it. That way, if you want to say something. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'd go even further than documents. For instance, uh, first there was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. We are wired for words. Without God, our words, our language, look what he did to, with Babylon. Yeah. So look at how our language is being bastardized with social media and everything. And at the same time, it's being divorced of God. The new God is the technology and the government. Amen. So. Artificial intelligence, even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many's ever read a speech made from the say the 1700s and couldn't even understand what they were saying? <laughs> oh, way above our head. You know, they, I mean, their words. I mean, what their, their intelligence level was so far above ours in, 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 yes. as, as far as education. It's unbelievable. But nonetheless, nothing. Please understand this, and I have, I lost a sponsor from a radio show because I said this. And I'm saying this, I respect being the people try to do it right. The Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and all the other articles, all the other writings are absolutely useless unless God is in them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I lost a sponsor because of that. New Man of Foods, I'll tell you this. Daniel Breen won't even talk to me more, he won't even speak to me. Actually, on his program, he's almost saying the opposite. What's he saying? He's saying that the, uh, the Bill of Rights is absolute law. Yeah. And even though that the Constitution doesn't really guarantee ourselves rights, it is saying to the government, we have these rights. But he's saying, now he's preaching Constitution to the hill. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure he is. But I, I will tell you this, I'm saying this, I love again. I've done my study on this. I would not say it without it. I can prove it. We don't have rights. No, we don't. We have duties before God. And when we do His duty, He blesses us. These are blessings we had, not rights. Do you follow what I'm saying to you? We've been blessed to be able to own guns and, 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 do, and use them. But it's a duty He gave us, according to His Word, Luke 20, 36, other places, to carry a gun to defend ourselves, mm -hmm. our families. But I'll tell you this, I've got to move on. We did not use these, quote, quote rights or, or blessings to even defend unborn children. So why would He want to keep our blessings coming to us over that? That's 100% correct. And there you go. Yes, Bill. Yeah, I was going to say, to have actual rights, you would have to be a sovereign. 
in yes. reality, there is only one sovereign, that's God. Right. You know, when we say so a man can be sovereign, he can't be. God is sovereign. God, yes. And is the creation, not the creator. Yep. That's very true. The real good. It's not God. I know, uh, and again, this is important, folks. I know this makes, I, this is one of the things that I'll need between myself and, and Numana. Man does not have rights. He has God-given blessings for obedience. You understand that? Mm -hmm. My daddy, growing up, would let Dick and I grab BB guns go to the woods, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. But if we started shooting windows out of the house, why would we have the BB gun? He'd probably hit us across tiny with They'd probably wrap around their heads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the right, it was a blessing he let us have it. A privilege, if you will, he let us use that. We call it the user responsibly, responsibly. So this is what we have today. A nation of crybaby whiners because they're losing their rights. And we lost all that because we didn't obey our God. <coughs> Is that pretty clear so far? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Matthew we, chapter 6, who has that? All right. If we murder we, read, born children, we should not have any privileges. No. None. Well, in, in, in Proverbs 24, 4. Yes. 24, no, 12. Yeah. Who who has who look up top are you looking up scripture for me, Yar? I have Jeremiah. Look up Proverbs twenty four, please. I want to show you something that you may not like, but I don't care if you like it or not. It's in the Bible and I'm gonna preach it. We're guilty of the blood of being shed. Okay. Proverbs twenty four verse eleven and twelve. Eleven and twelve. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou say it, behold, we know it not, doth not he that uh, pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what he just read? Mm -hmm. If we know the slaughterness and people do nothing about it, did he not say he render to us our works? Yes, yeah. exactly right. All right no. Cry what? out and raise king, somebody's going to kill a cow or a dog. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I don't get into that, but I, you know, I, I, I love animals. I got a little dog that actually thinks he, well, he lets us live in the house. He's nice to us. <laughs> but yeah. I see those commercials where they advertise those, and they are actually pitiful to look at. Dogs and cats being mistreated, and they're, yes. they're not wrench my heart. Yes. But then I think, why don't they show the picture of a, of a boarded child, a murdered child on there? Why don't they show yeah, that? Exactly right. Something's got a soul. Exactly. Okay, Matthew 6, 24. What did Christ say, Phil? 6, 24? Yes. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and men. Let's, uh, we're, we, we'll break it down in, in, in individually, too. Can I serve me as supreme and God also? No. <laughs> It's called self-serving. It is. By the word, the word master, by the way, is number 2962 in the concordance. It means supreme authority, okay, as controller. Supreme authority as controller. It also means God, Lord, and master. So if, if I'll, now, what's the old commercial used to be out there? Uh, oh, gee. Uh, but you, you know, you're your own master. Uh, I can't remember. These used to be commercial. You must have back to well, it was be all you can be and be an army of one and yeah I just arms. anyway this boy they said that you are do hey you. you do what you want to do you're your own you know, your own God so to speak isn't that what happened in the garden if yes. it feels good do it exactly yeah. that's part of it yeah. and, and, and 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 what's the other one said you're worth it go ahead whatever it is you see so but is that not flying in the face of what I just read yeah. either Christ is a head or he's not head at all. Now we've all been guilty of playing the playing the fence, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, and we're paying for it, aren't we? We'll never reverse all that we've done. But I tell you this: by His grace and mercy, even though we've seen where we failed and we're reaping those things, and and, and, and even, <laughs> the hope is in Him, not in our past. No. He knows we're sorry now in our personal lives. We gotta go on and do our best to serve him. But we are reaping the benefits of man and being judged by a holy God. Yes, Bill. Yeah, when it comes right down to it, I believe that the drug problem is because the young people really have no hope. Right. 
it, it's a matter of if they if they had hope, they wouldn't be turning to that. That's exactly right. They need to back up one more generation. Mom and dad is too busy ch chasing the dollar or spending the nights at the bars and the berry joints, letting the children take care of themselves. True. Mm -hmm. and, and the one thing too about drug abuse is like crack cocaine, and we know it's addictive. And we know that it will kill you, same as heroin, same as methamphetamines. We even have a recorded case now of a young boy died from eating marijuana Twinkies, or I mean, or brownies, brownies whatever. Brownies. <clears throat> And they know that it will kill them, and yet they choose to do it because they have no hope. This gives them that temporary God feeling of, I feel a good. Fix, a little yeah. fix. I feel good for a couple minutes, and I feel great. That's why they want them to go to church, get a fix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They try to get They high. don't go there to learn. They go get high. They get a fix. They get high. You know, and that, that's why, and I, this, please, this is, the, 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 I don't mean this. This needs to be taught in all the churches. To see how we got here, to understand how we got here, we can we, we can change our own lives anyway. How we got this area, but now we just read that you can't serve two masters, and eventually one of the which your master is, is going to control you. That's what that's what I said. Supreme authority as controller. I have to ask: Are we now being dictated to in every part of our lives by our so-called civil authorities? And told how to live, mm -hmm. how to dress, but basically how to take care of your body, how to, uh, how, every, how to spend your money. Is that all? But basically, all what you're doing is controlling everything you like. Regulation and license. Someone's coming. Regulation and license. That's just what it is. Yeah. So now, I got a question to ask you. How many? How many masters can you have in your life? That, uh, that you're going to obey complete, completely. Should completely, you only have one. One. Right. one. Then why? Then why do? You, why do you think the courts, the legislatures, are trying and succeeding in eradicating all reference to God, the symbols of, of Jehovah God, from society? Why do you think they're doing that? They're because they want to become God. They want to divorce you of the real God. They, they won't, won't let you. The they won't let you serve two. They, you can't serve two masters, right? And they know that. So they were going to take away all the references to one. Even though, even they know that they can allow us to serve another master. They can't even allow us to pretend to serve the other master. Eventually, if they're afraid that will start, will start coming out against them. In, in their realm of authority, they will cut off all of the reference to any authority. When they're doing their best to do it. Courts and politicians absolutely love laws and commandments as long as they get to make them. Yeah. Right? Yes, Phil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's often, be, it's often been said, as a matter of fact, I think it was maybe H.G. Wells said it. He said, those that control the present control the past. Those that control the past control the future. So if we let the ungodly control the present, they're going to change our history and they're going to set our future. Hmm. After the war between the states, who wrote the history books? The North. The North. Now, now, who are they purging from history? The South. The South. South. Ah! You can't have two masters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Folks, nature itself and the, and the acts of man <clears throat> proves what we're saying to be true. It does. Who, who has Isaiah, uh, Isaiah or Jeremiah 17? I do. Read verse 5, please. Thus saith the Lord. No, wait a minute. Who said? Thus saith the Lord. Maybe I'll listen to it. Okay, go ahead. Then. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Cursed be the man that does what? Trusts in man. And makes flesh his strength, his provider. That's what that means. Trust in, uh, I mean, makes it, it trust in man's arm or flesh and strength. That's what that boils down to. I mean, when you put that faith that you had in God, in man to be your provider, you've done what to yourself? Cursed, Cursed yourself. yourself. Yeah. May I ask you, please, then, how is it, Phil, who Dr. Nehemiah chapter 11 says, that I, uh, Nehemiah chapter 9 says, I will make 
give him dominion over your body. How did man become dominant over your body? What did you do to allow that? Let him. You asked for their help. Yeah. Feed me. Mm -hmm. Clothe me. Treat me medically. Became a word of of the state, the of, the, state. of man's laws. So mm -hmm. man's system of government usurped the authority of God because we let him have it. They didn't take it, we give it to them. And we signed the contract. We did. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and it's, it's crazy because we can't rescind their rights off of our body. The government. We can't. Yeah, no, can't. No. Because once we sign that contract with them, we can't back out of it. That's why it's so important that spiritually mm -hmm. we put our soul in Christ's hand because the body's already been captive, folks. Yep. You're not going to get out of those. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. And as a matter of fact, in law, the highest form of law is actually contract law. Yes, it is. Because, for instance, the government can't use the Constitution or anything to enslave anyone because, okay, you're, you're not, you know, you can't force someone to be a slave. However, you can contract out to be a slave. Of course. Mm -hmm. You can of contract course. out. So you can give away something the government can't take, but you can lose it by contract because that's higher than the other. You see, when, whenever you go to another master than what than what one we had with our creator, you give them the right to be your master. Mm -hmm. Even if you do it ignorantly? Yeah. It makes no difference. Yeah. You're still a slave. Who is Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 12? I do. Read verse 2, please. <clears throat> Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength mm -hmm. and my song. He also is my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, th that, our, our first, the first <coughs> people of our real, real founding fathers were the pilgrims and, and the Puritans. We know that they came over here for that purpose. They, didn't, they come over here and set up a civil authority. They never had legislatures to meet to pass laws. They meant to make sure God's laws were being upheld. We sincerely had a Christian nation up until about 1770. <coughs> and things started turning around. True. I'm proving a minute. I promise. Now, who is Isaiah 33? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Yeah. Isaiah 33. Okay. I'm trying to set a foundation here to show exactly there. what's you know, happened. The Puritans had the Mayflower Compact, and that was their, 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 their government. And then when they realized that it wasn't perfect, they actually did change some of the, some of the way that the Puritan government operated because they were, they were too socialist mm -hmm. to begin with. And they found out, no, it's, you know, you don't work, you don't eat. Yep, that's why well, they almost starved death first when they called yeah, it mm -hmm. so, so, communism. Yeah, didn't work. But Isaiah 33, 22 is a verse I've asked y'all to memorize, at least in word at the Bible, and find it quickly. Verse 22 says, For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. That's not true. The government is our judge. Mm -hmm. The government is our lawgiver. The government is our king. <coughs> he will save us. Because I'm going to ask for food stamps and Medicaid and Social Security and free public education. And I'm going to ask for all these things. I'm going to ask for chip for my children. I'm going to ask because Steve, he's my provider. Now, we did, we have, and we are doing that. So what has it cost us? So why are we crying about him? You follow what I'm saying? We got our butt smacked, and rightfully so then, haven't we? That's why it breaks apart from the grandchildren, because I did not know. 
But that doesn't change the results of it. So we're in bondage and slavery. It's, yeah, exactly. Except, now, folks, this is important to separate these two. Our bodies are now owned by our masters. Yeah. Well, they'll tell you uh, what you know vaccines you have to have. Sure. Mm -hmm. And everything's coming to that point where they dictate your body. So that's why I tell you, Phil Hudak, to make sure you sold your demon blood of Christ, that your spirits are set free. Because you can, they can imprison your body, and they probably will. But they cannot chain down your soul and your nope. spirit. Go ahead. Nope. Yeah, just, just like the uh, clip we had in current events about 5G, and he said, you, your only hope is in that God protects you. Yes. That's what it comes back to. I don't care what their technology is. Um, you know, look at the five. Look at the three Hebrew children. <laughs> yeah. He had he had a furnace, but it didn't work, did it? No. So it, not not, not on them, it didn't. It didn't heat that corner of the room. So I'm not saying this to discourage anybody, folks. We're we're going to go through the Ten Commandments in a minute. The Ten Commandments, biblically, and to show you where the, the new our new gods have usurped authority with our permission. And that's why I do preach against it. And I tell people to defend what they have left. But don't cry because you lost rights, so-called rights. Shed tears of repentance because they let it happen. We turn it back on our Creator. Shed tears of repentance for that and ask Him to please preserve your soul in Him. But understand that our bodies will be punished. We'll be ens we're totally enslaved. And the Master that owns those bodies are not going to turn us loose. Any comments? Anyone? No comments? <clears throat> Here are some people, some men, who oppose the Constitution Convention. Ever heard of Patrick Henry? Yes. Mm -hmm. How about Samuel Adams? Yes. yes. George Mason? Yep. Yeah. Richard Henry Lee? Yep. Jane Monroe? Yep. Those others also, like Rick, uh, James Warren uh, uh, and others. But they opposed the Constitution Convention. Now you would think but we, we, but we hold it up to such reverence and such awe. There were some good things in it. But they knew that unless the, this, this was checked by the laws of God, it would not stand. They took the power of the laws, of, of, of the authority of the laws of God and gave it to we the people. And it will work as long as the people are moral people. But then it turned into a democracy where the people vote themselves benefits. Mm. And government becomes our master. George Washington said, I pray that our politicians don't turn the politics to the wallet. That's it. James Warren said this in Revolution, he said this in 1775. It has pleased Almighty God in his providence to suffer this calamities of an unlawful war to take place among us. And as we have reason to fear that unless we become a penitent and reformed people, we shall still forever, we shall, we shall feel still we shall feel still severe, severe tokens of his displeasure. In other words, we sinned, that's why we're at war, repent. And, that, and, that, and as the most effectual way to escape those desolating judgments, which so evidently hang over us, will be that we repent and return everyone from his iniquities unto him that correcteth us. What if we had a man in office today, a uh, uh, Supreme Court justice, listen, only oh, ask repentance. Who believe him? Nobody. All of a sudden, he'd have all kinds of girlfriends, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The truth? Yeah. yeah. What if Donald Trump said that, hey, repent of your sins, let's make this nation great and go back to church? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, they'd probably find girlfriends for him, too. He said that. Patrick Henry was a five time governor of Virginia. <coughs> and he's the one, of course, said, give me, give me, give me death. We know that. But Patrick Henry warned, warned that Virginia's ratifying convention, June 5th, 1788. He warned them about this. Examples are so, to be found in ancient Greece and ancient Rome, and the people losing their liberty by their carelessness and the ambition of a few. We are told that we need not fear because those in power being our representatives will not abuse the power we put in their hands. Okay. I am not well versed in history, uh, in history, but I will submit to your recollection where the liberty had been destroyed by the by the tyranny of, of rulers. 
Those nations ne ne negligently suffering their liberty to be wrestled from them have grown under intolerable dispos disposition, disp despotism. Most of the human race are now in that despotable condition. This is 1700s. He said they groan because they turned their liberties over to tr and trusted men with them. This is during the Constitutional Convention. Now, while, while the name of God with men like Patrick Henry and some others be so set against this, could, you reckon they really could see something coming together with this? Well, he was a preacher. He, probably he was a preacher. He also went on to say, the Constitution is said to, be, to have beautiful features. But when I come to examine these features, sir, they appear to be horribly frightful. It squints towards monarchy. Your president may easily become king. <laughs> Oh my. Wow, he's almost a prophet, wasn't he? If your American ch chief be a man of ambition and abilities, how easy it is for him to render himself absolute. Yeah. The army is in his hands. And if he be a man of address, it will be attached to him. It will be subject of long meditation with with him to seize the first auspicious moment to accomplish his design and sir will the American spirit solely relive, relieve you when this happens in other words you cry about liberty when the president if you served authority will you want liberty to change it you must have read kings in the bible in the old testament yeah. do you follow what I've been saying so far I've always thought that he was the greatest of the founders. I, I think yeah. you're right. <clears throat> well, what he wrote there, he just came out of, uh, you know, David and Solomon mm -hmm. for what they done. Exodus chapter 20. We're going to read. We're going to read some about the ten suggestions. And that's where I went. Ten suggestions and mm -hmm. ten commandments. <clears throat> suggestions, Lord No, no, no. We got commandments. Oh, don't go on it. <laughs> yeah. Twenty. Let's start reading the verse one. Of course, and God spake all these words, saying, "I am." By the way, that's the name of God. You know that, right? I am. I am. The Lord, not Lord, is Yahweh. Y H V H. Exodus, Exodus twenty. I am the Lord Yahweh, thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. I'll just be in the hours on that. Spiritually speaking, when you come to Christ, He brings you out of the land of Egypt. And you're in bondage of Satan. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in bondage of powers and, and, and principalities and powers that you allowed in your life, or maybe you wanted your life. He set you free from those. Yeah. He brought the, physically. He brought, he brought Israel out of Egypt physically to bring them forth out of bondage, out of captivity, and set them in a promised land. When you're born again, Kelly, he brings you out of bondage and puts you in a promised land, his new kingdom. You're now in the kingdom of God. What do we, sw what do we swap for that? We give up our unrighteousness. Everything. We swapped away that kingdom, so to speak, for man's handouts, have we not? That's why I tell you now, please make sure your spirit and soul is right, right with Christ. The kingdom's still within you. You've, yeah, you sold your birthright physically, but don't give away your spirit and soul. Right. That's good yeah. preaching for you. Hey, Jeff. This is. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We that have, word we have many gods we have many gods that word god is number 430 433 and 410 it means and about the word gods i should say the words god the same word same one it's in verse three as an uh, it means supreme god magistrate deity or idol uh -huh. you should have no other deities no other magistrates no other supreme god no other idol before me Oh, my God in heaven, thank you for your saving grace and forgiveness, Lord. We certainly have blew that. Mm -hmm. Comment, Steve. I see you thanking. No comment. Just soaking it in my mind. We, we are so blessed, even beyond that, Phil Hudock, we still are so blessed, even physically. Though we're sitting here in warm clothing in a, in a warm building and a good bed to sleep in, food, or a, a, a food to eat when you get home, and a family that loves us, we're so blessed yet! 
But how much have we sold for something that man promised and you, signed a contract to take? Go ahead, Bill. Well, we just need to take advantage of that in our service to him. That's exactly right. We do. So this, this is the, yes, we've messed up, but please do not be despondent and despair to the point of quitting. We still, our souls are intact with him as long as we trust him and love him. Our souls cannot be touched. Didn't Christ say, fear them? Don't fear them that can kill the body, but fear the one that can destroy your soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. If they kill me physically, I win. That's right. <laughs> you know, I, I'm... A couple years ago, my, my and Dick's dad passed away, and I miss him terribly. He still do, and I probably always will. But I'm relieved of the fact that he's no longer in this world seeing all these things. Aren't you, Dick? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that his, his battle's finished. Yep. Yeah, the body died, but they couldn't touch his soul. No. Nope. Any comments so far? Well, if you can't be happy about heaven, you can't be happy about anything. I agree. That's exactly right. All right, let's go to see. And this, that, that, that was the first commandment. I had no other God before him. Now, let's go, into, let's go to verse... Uh, four? Uh, verse 4. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, the, the title of verse 3 also. Uh, it's on idolatry. Thou shalt know the God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness for anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under, under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting, I mean, bringing the iniquity, the lawlessness of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now let that sink in a minute. Did he, did he just say that just to fill the page? No. Didn't he just tell us that he would take the laws of the fathers and put it down with the children? Did he say that or not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hosea 4, 7, uh, 4, 6 said, Because you've forgotten my laws, I'll forget your children. Now, folks, how serious is that? It's very serious. When you parents out there see this, you think, Well, I can live my life and do something I want to do, forget the laws of God. You're cursing your children. Makes me want to cry, Joe. And, and we'll read a little verse that shows hope and, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and do what? Keep my Keep commandments. Keep my commandments. You, you said see? if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Romans 13, verse 4 says what, Lynn? I want to read this, folks, really important. And Joe, look up Philippians chapter 4 if you don't care. And feel Proverbs 23. <clears throat> And then look up Exodus 34, if you don't mind. Did they give you one, Kelly? No. Okay. Look up, uh, well, that, never mind, it's still the same chapter, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Romans chapter 13, but they can read the, read the whole chapter. Verse 4, who has that? Who is Romans 13, verse 4, who has that? Oh, I'm at 13. Four. Okay, okay, read it for us. For he is the minister of God unto thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now who's he talking about there? The civil authority. Mm -hmm. Understand this. The, the, the preachers take this today and, and tell us we got to obey all man's laws because uh, that's what Romans 13 says. That is not what it's mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. No. Didn't he come close to saying that? No. No. I'm going to take time to break down a minute, folks. We, if we run over, I won't run over an hour, but if we go longer than one, actually one lesson on this, I hope you don't mind because we're going to cover this, folks. It's important. How have we, through our ignorance, our stupidity, destroyed the laws of our God in our lives to the point that we ignored them to, to our own peril and our children are paying for it? Exactly. I was talking to Phil's girls yesterday and we were talking about a family they saw somewhere who uh, whose children were born in a home. They had no birth certificates, no social security numbers, nothing. 
They were more or less, they were actually free individuals. They, they homeschooled them. But when they turned 16 and wanted to go get the driver's license, that ended. Mm -hmm. The problem began. Started. It ended. Start the contract. They had to to get driver's license. Yep. There was a time, Lynn Hudock, when you were you become old enough, you didn't need a license to get on something and travel. Nope. You didn't have to carry ID with you across state lines. Nope. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. You were your own ID. Now that you can keep you can keep them out of the system to the 16, but if they won't get if they won't drive and go out and get a job, and make a living. Guess what? They have to be under contract. They have to sign contract. But it says in verse 4 that the civil servant is the minister of God. You know what that word minister actually means? Now, folks, I look this up. I don't make stuff up. I look it up because I want to know. Let's see what it means. It means someone to run errands. That's in the concordance, number 1249. A waiter, a teacher, a deacon. That sounds like servants. That's what it is. Yeah. A minister. That word means he's a guy to run errands for you. He's a guy to be a waiter, a teacher, and a deacon. That's what the ministry of the civil authority is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Now they become a master. Is that out of order biblically? Yes. Yeah. Now look at because he said he said for for the minister of the God for thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, this minister, this servant, this errand boy is given authority to punish evildoers. He has some authority in order to enforce righteous mm -hmm. laws. You understand that? A pastor has to have some authority in the church in order to enforce the laws of the church as far as morality goes. If, if, I, if a pastor is only knows someone in, in the congregation who's committing an out, out, outright sin and he doesn't correct it, what would that do to the whole body? It's corrupted. You taint the whole body. It's like a bad apple. It is. So a civil authority, a righteous authority, has ever ever right, if you commit murder, to put you to death. Mm -hmm. If he's a minister of God. Yeah, that's the whole point. If, yes. if yes, if if you are, if he's a righteous minister and you come, and you break God's law of murder, he has every authority by God to put you to death. Mm -hmm. Any comments so far? <clears throat> And it goes on, I mean, if you read this, uh, just read it for yourself. He, he's a revenger to execute. God gives him the authority to revenge for evil done on people who disobey the laws of God. That's what a civil authority is supposed to be. Now, I ask you today that when a preacher that's preaching against homosexuality in the streets when they're having a homosexual parade is arrested, has that man crossed his line of authority? Mm -hmm. sure he's not serving a God, is he's he? He's not serving a God. Any comments so far? <clears throat> Feel what you're thinking about. What you said. What I said. <laughs> <laughs> and by, uh, and uh, so, he, so they cease being, whenever we let them become our authority, they cease being a servant and become our idol. Mm -hmm. I said idol. We obey them over God. Yes. Is that an idol? Mm -hmm. Is that an idol? Yeah. He who you serve will become your master. So that makes you an idol to yourself also. Mm -hmm. You chose to disobey God's laws and obey this man. You become your own God also. So that means we step out of God's sovereignty. There you go. And we, as we step out from away from his sovereignty, and we're coming under man's sovereignty. That's like when Barack Obama said that we were too stupid to take care of ourselves and we had to fall under the powers of a greater so sovereign, meaning government. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does it make sense to you, Steve? Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 4, who is that? I do. Read verse 19. <coughs> but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He'll supply all your needs? Mm hmm. But what if I need a place to sleep and something to eat? He'll supply it. But in Isaiah 20, 20, uh, 22, 33, didn't I just read it to you also? Or 33, 22? You mean that's still the same thing in the New Testament? Yes. But, but, what, but Phil, what if I can't afford to buy a new car? If I have to buy my food, then I can't afford to buy a new car. How am I going to make payment on a Cadillac? No excuse. No excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Go find a a you mean I have to learn how to do the right thing? Buy a Chevrolet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let this sink in a minute. 
people get on welfare and get free food stamps so they can buy a bigger car. You, Am I telling the truth? Yep. Yes, they do. So what's that taking away from them but common sense and know how to take care of themselves? As Lynn said in the math class, they couldn't even count with the count with pay money and then what a coupon was for. Is that sad? But yet they know how to use a calculator. Oh. Yeah. Man, who has Proverbs twenty three? Oh I do. Okay. <laughs> We're probably gonna wrap it up this run out of time. But Proverbs twenty three, I'm gonna turn it with you. Would you read verse one, Phil? Verse one? Yes, read verse one, start off. <clears throat> when thou sittest to eat with a roar, consider diligently what is before thee. Now let's just pause. Let's just let this up just wait a second. Why would he put in the Bible that when you sit down when you sit down to eat, to, to break bread or fellowship with a ruler, be careful what you say and do. Because he knew your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that a ruler would use your appetite to control you? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh mm -hmm. my, yes. Yeah. Our, very, our very fears is what Satan uses to control us. But man is inherently the same way. Our very things that we use in our daily lives that our security blankets. Sure. He knows how to take those from us. Have we by our own lust been enticed to follow man's ways because it's easier mm -hmm. physically? Throughout our whole life. Have we not all been trained that way? No. In verse 2 says what, Phil? And put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. <coughs> what? Are you saying uh, you're it's self-destruction? Yeah. Go ahead and cut your throat. You're going to kill yourself anyway doing this. Mm -hmm. He said it's, it, it's better to die than to follow that. But we don't believe that, do we? No, we shouldn't. Verse 3 says what I feel. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Mm -hmm. Don't desire, don't desire his delicacies, his handouts, because they're deceitful. <laughs> they are. Oh my! That means I give up my Social Security, my Medicaid, my Medicare, and I'll give all that up. Then won't I? You give up your catalog. You paid into that. What? You paid into it, but they took it from you to begin with. So, so they get back to you as, as they want to. And if you don't follow the rules, they cut you off. You know, yeah, they, they do. Cut it down anyway. So this is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But do we do we put our lives through our throats? No, mom, dad, my mom, dad was guilty too. That was grace and it happened, and, and because that social security come in and rose up by then, they were going to save the people when they retired. Did it? No. No, actually, social security brings more destruction to the family. Do you understand, folks? This is Bible, okay? This is this is breaking the second commandment. We now have new idols that we trust to provide for us over and above the authority of our, of our law of God. In verse four, yeah, it says, and this. This is where uh, the schools now, instead of having scripture in school, they tell you you're there to get a to make money and have good benefits. Yeah. So number four is labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. You know, we're going to run out of time for him to finish these next eight verses. Labor not to be rich, and that's what we're taught from the time we're born. Get a good education, get a good job. Nothing wrong with that. But when we put that as our highest priority, what does that become? Our God. Our idols. Our idols. Yeah. And how many people have destroyed their lives? And James has warned, have st stabbed themselves with sharp knives, laboring to get rich. Yeah. How many have, st have stomped on their friends and family yeah. and uh, hurt many people doing that? I've seen it. Well, I had a man come in one time who was trying to do everything he can to hold on to his Christian faith. And he was very wealthy, and it was all crumbling apart around him. His wealth was, and his faith became obvious who he really served, but it wasn't Jesus. Amen. Because when his wealth began to crumble, he went into <clears throat> chronic depression. But he says, I keep tithing my money. I don't know why it's not turning us. It's because idolatry. You have put your wealth above God. And now it's being taken from you, and you don't like it. Yeah, well, of course, it's like taking a pacifier from a baby. Why? The, the last, last part of the verse says, Cease from thine own, own wisdom. Yeah. Whoa, we should have done that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, we should have.
I'm up, stop there. Oh, Fred reach the rest first and they come back. But I want you to look the next one, next time you come back. Uh, and it says, Wilt thou set thine own eyes on that which is not? May I ask you something very quickly? As we're going to read this. Are the things we call riches today very fleeting? Mm-hmm. Yes. You're going? Yep. And do we actually have anything of substance to say they're riches anyway now? No. Vanity. Vanity. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, we love you. See you next time. Mm-hmm.